Dear students, continuing with the design of riveted joints. In the previous lecture, we discussed the procedure for the design of longitudinal joint of a boiler. And this lecture is for the design of circumferential joint of boilers. I, Dr. Balraj Singh Brad from Yadvindra College of Engineering, Talwandi Sabu, India, I am present. We discussed that the boilers are usually cylindrical in shape and thin shells. Thin shells means the ratio of internal dia to the thickness of the plates is usually more than 20. So from th thin pressure shell theory, the stresses acting on the longitudinal joints are sigma H, hoop stresses or circumferential hoop stresses, circumferential stresses or attention tangential stresses and relation is pi inner pressure d shell 2 divided by 2t and the stresses acting on the circumferential joints are longitudinal stresses and relation is pi inner pressure d shell by 4t what we observe is in the longitudinal stress denominator is 40 whereas in hoop stress denominator is 2t so hoop stress hoop stress is almost twice the longitudinal stress so this necessitates that the longitudinal joint should have efficiency for the same thickness of plates twice than the efficiency of the circumferential joint so usually the longitudinal joints are butt joints and circumferential joints are lap joints the fig this is a figure in the inset shows the longitudinal joint is a butt joint with the two butt steps of unequal width upper is narrow lower inner one is wider and it is butt joint is triple riveted butt joint with alternate rivet in the outer pitch missing so for higher efficiencies and the circumferential joint is overlapping joint what we observe is the circumferential plate is overlapping the plates which are under butt joint here it is shown that it is overlapping and two rows of rivets along the circumferential joints are have been placed this figure explains one more thing that the longitudinal joints for different plates are staggered over the surface say this is the longitudinal joint we make a circum longitudinal and circumferential joints overlap then we stagger the overlapping of this longitudinal and circumferential joint here and here it is again a longitudinal and circumferential joint joints are overlapping these are staggered over the full surface of the boilers now this figure shows the top view and front view of circumferential joint which is a lap joint as uh, in the inset figure let us first discuss that it is shows that two plates this plate and this plates are under are under longitudinal butt joint with the triple riveted butt joint upper plate is narrow uh, upper butt strap is narrow lower butt strap is wider and alternate pitch is missing and the circumferential plate is overlapping this and three rows of rivets have been placed what we are observing is that thickness of circumferential plate is more than the upper butt strap and moreover upper butt strap is made at wedge shaped and it goes and similarly a recess is created in the circumferential plate and it goes inside and we place the rivets figure shows the a and b plates are under 
are joined by longitudinal butt joint. Here the sketch shows triple riveted butt joint with, with equal width of butt straps inner and outer. This blue light blue color is here it is uh, not much visible because of, of transparency of the plate uh, in the drawing. So this plate is a butt strap. Now top view shows that butt strap is having a wedge here and it goes inside the circumferential plate C. Moreover, in the side uh, in the front view, we observe that upper butt strap is having a taper here zero and here thickness of T1 is there. It goes inside. So we place the here we have in the time we have shown two rows of rivets for uh, uh, two rows of rivets in the circumferential joint. What we observe is certain rivets say these rivets these rivets are now passing through four plates four plate means a wedge a recessed circumferential plate a wedged uh, butt strap plates a b and the lower butt strap and the these rivets these rivets passing through these four plates Basically, butt strap and C makes a single plate passing through three, uh, three plates are under double shear. Whereas the rivets here for most of the uh, circumferential joint here and here, they are passing through only two plates, A plate and, and C plate or B and C and they are under single shear. So, uh, in the front view these some of these rivets are passing through two plates and these rivets are passing through uh, three plates so let us right this figure shows the circumferential plate is having a recess which takes the upper butt strap into it and here in this figure we are showing two butt straps this is the lower butt strap which is complete and goes below the circumferential plate and this is the upper butt strap with the wedge and it is cut like this and has a taper here reducing to zero and the rivets which are passing through these are uh, under double shear. Now thickness of boiler shell procedure is same as for the longitudinal joint. We design for hoop stress. We calculate hoop stress, PI inner pressure, diameter of shell by 2T, ensure that this is less than allowable tensile strength. So when we rearrange it, allowable tensile strength becomes PI inner pressure into D shell by 2 sigma T allowable tensile strength and eta of the joint. Eta of butt joint. And butt joints have usually high efficiencies. Then 1 to 3 mm allowance is added for corrosion. But according to Indian boiler regulations, we should ensure minimum of 7 mm thickness. Diameter of rivet hole D, again procedure is same for the longitudinal as for the longitudinal joint. If the thickness is more than 8 mm, which is usually the case, we need not do any calculation or any draw any rational relation. Rather, we go for an empirical relation on means formula. Say we take D is equal to 6.05 root T, we calculate and we ensure that D minimum should be greater than thickness of the plates. Otherwise, while making the holes, there is a danger of crushing of punch. According to Indian Baller regulations, factor of safety for all these calculations for reliable stresses should be 4. But if thickness is less than 8 mm or between 7 mm, which is rare the case, then we ensure that Shear strength of the rivets should be equal to the crushing strength of the 
rivets. For a single row, a single row of butt joints, we have pi by 4 d with a single step, pi by 4 d square tau should be equal to this should be equal to this should be equal to dt sigma c but if there are more number of rows we have to take care of number of rivets in crushing per unit pitch and similarly number of rivets in shear we have to take care how many under single shear how many under double shear and k is the factor for double shear which is we take the value of 1.875 for the boilers so till now we have, have calculated the thickness of the plate circumferential plate diameter of rivet hole and then we have to calculate total force acting on the circumferential seam this uh, this drawing or this view shows a 3D view of uh, the, uh, the joints where interface of longitudinal and circum uh, longitudinal joint is this joint which is triple riveted butt joint joining A and B plates along the uh, along the circumference and circumferential joint when we join C plate we are increasing the shell along the longitudinal axis and this joint is circumferential joint and circumferential joint for most of the length is have is lap joint joining a and c or b and c but this sometimes at the inner face the upper butt step is wedge shaped goes inside the circumferential plate which has a recess and the rivets here are under double shear. Now the force for the complete circumference which is which is there on the circumferential joint or seam is calculated by F is pi by 4 d shell square. It is either the area of the circular plate and plates or it is the projected area even if the uh, ends are hemispherical in shape so pi by 4 d shell square into the inner pressure we calculate how much force this joint has to take care of now shearing resistance of one rivet is f dash area all the rivets most of the rivets are under shear uh, are under single shear so we take pi by 4 d square for single shear multiply by tau allowable shear stress of the material strength of the material and crushing resistance of the of one rivet is f double dash which is dt projected area of the rivet under crushing multiplied by sigma c allowable crushing strength of the material so Next, we found, find the total number of rivets, capital Z. Now, to prevent shearing of rivets, what we do? We have to, the joint has to resist F force, which is the total force acting on the circumferential joint. And F dash is the uh, resistance which can be taken, uh, resistance to single shearing of a single rivet so rivet under single shear so it we have the relations we uh, we calculated in the previous slide f dash is pi by 4 d square into tau and f is area of the cross section of the shell multiplied by the pressure we calculate z Similarly, to prevent the crushing of rivets, we divide F total force to the resistance required to shear one rivet or to crush one rivet, which is F double dash. So we have calculated it to be dt into sigma c. We will cal calculate z dash and z double dash. Then the total number of rivets required Z are maximum of the these two calculated values. 
but if the load is fluctuating say from f minimum to f maximum then we what we do we reduce sigma t tau and sigma c allowable stresses by this factor which is 1 upon in the denominator 1 minus 1 by 3 f minimum to f maximum we have to take care of the signs of the f minimum and f maximum and always this factor will be less than 1 so in this way now we know how many rivets we need z number of rivets we need to put along the circumferential joint single circumferential joint next is pitch of the circumferential joint P. The figure shows the pitch distance between the rivets. This may be different from what is what is the pitch for the longitudinal joint. How is it calculated? Once we have designed the longitudinal joint, we will find the joint efficiency, longitudinal joint efficiency, eta. We will divide it to by two. So this is the minimum because along the circumferential joint stress is less so half efficiency will be sufficient for us we will find out the circumferential efficiency which is half of the longitudinal efficiency but in no case this should be less than 42 percent so once circumferential efficiency is known we will find out the joint efficiency from assuming tearing efficiency as the lowest. So it is P minus D by P. We have discussed in detail. So now eta circumferential is known. D is known. We can determine the value of pitch P. Next is number of rows in the joint. Now we find number of rivets in one row, which is small z. But from circumference along which the rivets have been placed, this is d shell plus t, average dia of the shell, pi d. Pi into d shell plus t, average circumference at the mid of the thickness. We divide it by pitch. We know how many rivets are required or how many rivets can be put along one row of circumferential joint then number of rows required is we have already calculated total number of rivets capital z we divide it by number of rivets in a small z so we will get get the value say one point something then we will put two rows if it is two point something we will put three rows and in this case as so on note we should also ensure according to indian boiler regulations to prevent leakage this pitch is between is less than a maximum pitch and is more than the minimum pitch minimum pitch is required to make the rivet heads and minimum is 2d so we ensure that our pitch should be more than 2d if pitch calculated becomes less than 2d we will take pitch to be 2 2d now we will also also ensure that p should be less than or at the most equal to the maximum pitch to ensure no leakage of the fluid for lap joint single riveted we know P maximum is 1.31 T plus 41.2. Similarly, for double riveted 2.62 T plus 41.28. For taper riveted 3.47 plus 41.28. Suppose P R value calculated value is more than P maximum, then we will take maximum value P maximum as the pitch of the circumferential joint. Next, we will determine the distance between the rows, which is back pitch 
margin and overlap now this figure shows figure shows distance between two rows of rivets along the circumferential joint is pb for zigzag riveting as is the case and distance of one row from the edge is margin similarly for the lower plate distance of lower plate edge from the rivet line is again margin margin for boilers should not be more than 1.5 d and similarly should not be less than 1.5 d as if it is less it will lead to tearing or shearing of the plate in the edge if it is more there is a chance of leakage and back pitch we will calculate in the same fashion as we discussed uh, from this table if it is zigzag we, minimum back pitch should be 0.33 times p p is the pitch plus 0.67 d d is the rivet hole diameter we will put p and d to be in mm if it is chain riveted it is 2d again d in mm now the total overlap required for c circumferential plate to what should be the overlap of circumferential plate over the A or B plates which have been joined by longitudinal joint also. So this is for the present case, this is this back pitch plus two margins. But if number of rows are more, back pitch, uh, we will have the distance between one more, suppose three rows, we will have to take one more back pitch. So overlap can be found by relation number of rows in rivets in the present case figure two, but it may be three. Minus one multiplied by back pitch plus two mm. So we have, we have determined all the values which are required to make a circumferential joint of the the thanks students